start so uh, thank you hello everyone thank you all for being with us today and i would just mention that there is a live, a live facebook as well you can follow us on facebook as well so it is the third session of our FAFC dialogues uh, which have been focusing uh, on the future of families in europe especially uh, in the aftermath of the covid 19 pandemic and uh, on how to use the recovery plan to, uh, to regenerate the continent and face the deep social and economic crisis caused by the various lockdowns especially. So we will now discuss the Green Paper on Aging, which has just been issued uh, on the European Commission's website. Uh, this document will focus on uh, demographic change, as we will see, uh, causing Europe's um, uh, population to age. This document's goal is indeed to launch a, a large public debate on this issue. So as we will see now, uh, in fact, the, the aging of population will necessarily have a heavy uh, socioeconomic impact, uh, which will affect many aspects of our everyday life and compel us to uh, deeply rethink uh, our current systems from national pension systems to infrastructures or even to our job schedules since, since people could have to take care of their uh, elderly parents and their young children at the same time in future in the future so we will uh, discuss all of that in the next few minutes with the vice president of the european commission for democracy and demographics uh, dubravka Schwitza, who is honoring us uh, with her presence today i know she has a lot to do today so uh, we are very grateful for her presence uh, but first of all president of the federation of catholic family association in europe and promoter of this conference vincenzo bassi will take the floor for a brief introduction uh, in which uh, He'll, uh, he'll explain why intergenerational balance is essential to uh, integral development. I shall just remind all of you uh, in the meantime to ask your questions if you have some in the Q&A box, uh, as the questions in chat uh, won't be considered. Thank you very much. Mr. Bassi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to Madam Vice President, uh, Mrs. Schuitza, for your participation, for the continuous dialogue with you and your cabinet uh, since the start of your mandate. The very first webinar on this uh, subject was organized uh, with you and your cabinets uh, following the publication of the report on the impact of demographic change in uh, June uh, 2020. Today's webinar takes place uh, on the day of the publication of the Green Paper on Aging. And we really welcome the fact that uh, uh, it has a life circle uh, approach. This means that the aging does not concern only the elderly, but the whole community at all stages uh, of life. Uh, you know already, but sometimes when uh, I, I used to speak with uh, institutions, uh, we say all the time that, that federation, that family associations are not union, uh, trade union or uh, consumer uh, uh, associations. We do not defend a part of so so society. We pretend to uh, give uh, some ideas and aspiration coming from uh, the real, uh, uh, life. And um, uh, we know that uh, uh, for uh, many years uh, uh, the family has been put aside uh, the public debate. And uh, also the family associations made many uh, mistakes in communicating the beauty of the family. But uh, as to the public institutions, uh, they didn't have any need to be interested of families because, as you know, the family uh, the families do not uh, go on strike. <laughs> we are fathers, uh, wives, uh, uh, mothers, uh, fathers, uh, and we don't give up our function. We, if you are responsible, we are uh, still carry out. Also now, we are, uh, I'm waiting for my children coming from school. Uh, in the meantime, we are doing this webinar because this is uh, uh, our life uh, and we take on this responsibility and we do not go on strike. So. Also for this reason, maybe uh, in the past, uh, we, we never spoken about enough is, about the family and their function. But we have to, to see that uh, 
uh, the family for this reason are uh, token are taken for granted and uh, now we put uh, uh, we need to put the family at the top of uh, the agenda and the reason is very simple the family can give a contribution in terms of reality and realism due to the ideology the public institutions uh, uh, confuse uh, reality uh, uh, with the idea of reality. But the families are not ideas or opinion. And looking at the family, also the policy can be inspired, but they are inspired by the concrete life and not by an uh, opinion. For this reason, we say that the aging of Europe is also a family issue. Uh, it's not a problem that people live longer, but that the people do not have, have any more the children they want. Aging is not an issue of elderly, as we said, but of the family. And we need uh, to support this point. We need to invest in intergenerational solidarity to allow the best inclusion and the participation of everyone in our communities, including the, uh, the elderly. In the joint reflection we published with the Comese, the Conference of Bishop, uh, of Bishop Conferences of the EU on the elderly and the future of Europe, we recommended national governments to make use of the resources of proposed uh, European Union recovery plan for investing in intergenerational relations in new structures of solidarity and in demographic and family policies. Family can contribute to the demographic challenge in two phases, when tackling the actual demographic challenges and when preparing the future by preventing the bad consequences of the demographic challenge. We know, everybody knows that uh, without uh, uh, solving uh, the actual uh, demographic winter, uh, even the mass criteria will collapse. That's why we have to tackle uh, now this demographic challenge in order to uh, prepare the future. Uh, families uh, can contribute uh, with a concrete intergenerational solidarity, which fights our strongest enemy, the loneliness, as uh, highlighted during the pandemic. This is, uh, uh, this, uh, the, 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 in case of, uh, of loneliness, uh, uh, the individual uh, can uh, felt uh, discharged as waste, and we have to struggle against the true away culture, especially when it refers to people. So it's not enough uh, to say that we can uh, prepare the, the future by increasing the productivity of the people and of the aging community. We have uh, to do our best efforts to improve the well-being uh, of families. Crucial role of the family in, is in this field. We cannot force anyone to create a family or to generate children. Yet, same as the entrepreneurs, we encourage them to take some risk to create economic values and new jobs. The same way we can award people who committed to generate new lives. With young people, we can better ensure the future of our continent, social and economic wellness. In this respect, uh, the, in, in this respect, we have to speak about also subsidiary principle. The EU uh, must, must consider uh, the, uh, the subsidiary principle as key for a better family work-life balance. And uh, we need to implement the new directive. Intergenerational solidarity is uh, the solution for the aging of Europe and uh, its future. We cannot only speak about uh, uh, 
uh, we cannot speak quantitatively about the length of lives, but also about the quality of life need for stronger, so we need a stronger community. And it's up uh, uh, to us as a family associations to take care of the family and to promote the stability of the family as a value. But on the other side, we need the public institutions which can recognize our role. That's why we, we, we really think that uh, a stable, uh, a union and the families are a resource. The family is uh, the care and not the key, the, key the, the seek to be cared. And for this reason, uh, as a president of uh, a, a, a family federations, I have to say that the family associations can, can, can play a very crucial uh, role uh, in this time. And we are at the service of the common good in Europe. For this reason, I'm really grateful today to have this dialogue with you, uh, Madam Vice President Schulze. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bassi, for this introduction. I shall waste no time in inviting uh, the Vice President to share her remarks with us. And then she will answer a few questions. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. Thank you, thank you, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, dear, uh, uh, dear Vincenzo. Uh, this is a very good opportunity to address you today. It is an exciting day as we have just launched a Europe-wide debate through our Green Paper on Aging, a paper with the potential to touch the lives of every single family member. I imagine some of you, just like me, watched the American presidential inauguration last week. The key message I took from this inauguration was the importance of family and unity to President Biden. This is also the case for the European Commission. Uh, President Bassi reminds us that we should not uh, forget how the European Union has been built by communities and ultimately by families. I can relate to this. European Union is like a family and unity is our strength. As the first ever European Commission Vice President for Democracy and Demography, I will speak to you about both aspects of my portfolio, but first to demography and Green Paper on Aging, which we adopted just a few hours ago. Not everyone understands what our work on demography means. Simply put, demography is about people's lives as individuals, as a family and as a community. Because demography is about people's lives, it is about finding the right policies to answer the difficult questions. This saves lives. We have seen it clearly with COVID-19. A better understanding of the demographics of a country or a region will have provide better policy responses. This is even more important as we strive to recover together from this crisis. We must spread the word on the importance of addressing demographic change. When it comes to the subject of aging, it is not just for the elderly, as you rightly said. We are all aging from the day we are born. This may sound like a slogan, but it is very true. We were all children and awkward teenagers once. Then we became adults, got jobs, built a family, became grandparents. As a grandmother myself, I cherish this precious relationship between generations. During all this time, we are getting older. Today, some of us are elderly. The fact is, one day we will all be elderly, if we are lucky, of course. <laughs> even the young and uh, <coughs> even the young are impacted directly by the prospect of living a longer life. Aging is relevant to all of us, no matter what age we are. I want to emphasize the important message that aging brings both challenges and opportunities. This really drives me in my work because we must balance our policy making for everyone across the entire life cycle, making sure we leave no one behind. This is why we today launched this 
EU-wide discussion and public consultation on aging through our Green Paper. The Green Paper on Aging launches a debate on the long-term impacts of aging with an emphasis on care and pensions and on how to foster active aging. We are not proposing solutions just yet. We first look at the key issues surrounding aging. Remember that aging, as I said, brings both challenges and opportunities. I thank you for the contributions you have already made to our work and look forward to hearing from you in public consultations, which is open for the next 12 weeks. I want to be clear, this conversation is multidimensional. Aside from care, pensions, labor market questions, we plan to look more closely at issues such as loneliness you mentioned, social isolation, mental health, economic resilience, and long-term care. It is also important to grasp the opportunities of aging, including through the silver economy, innovation, as well as intergenerational solidarity. We have a strong territorial angle in the paper because certain challenges are reinforced at regional levels too. Families are key in this debate. As I said earlier, we take a life cycle approach, life cycle approach starting in childhood, then working age, and on to fit active retirement, and then the older years. The path is clear. If you want to be active and healthy later in life, it is important to start young. This helps to lay the necessary foundations for a full life. Active and healthy aging is also about learning. We are not obliged to stop learning at any stage. Therefore, lifelong learning opportunities are necessary and we need to think about how we can foster this and make it accessible to everyone. When it comes to learning, families are again key. In the formative years, families are the ones who show the way to their youngest members and lead as an example of an active, full and healthy life. So we must support this where and when we can. I want to be clear on an important point. The Commission respects fully the national competencies and national situations and cultures of all member states. Across the Union, families face similar difficulties and we work to support them. The Work-Life Balance Directive aims at more flexible working arrangements and access to family leave and care carers' leave. The Youth Guarantee aims at enabling young adults enter the labor market and supports their aim to live independent lives and start their own families. The upcoming action plan on the European Pillar of Social Rights will propose action to fully implement those rights, many of which are closely linked to aging. Families are composed of many generations, so we must address intergenerational responsibility and solidarity. It underpins the very fabric of our societies, particularly in the context of the rights of older persons and also children's rights. I believe that intergenerational fairness implies that policymakers cater to the needs of all generations in a sustainable way. This is where my work on a new and comprehensive European strategy on the rights of the child comes into play. It is designed to embed the perspective of child rights in all European Union policy areas. We are taking here, uh, we, are, we are talking here about the rights of the most vulnerable children who have the right to the same protection and access to services. We will adopt the new strategy in the coming months, I think uh, end of March. Another initiative is our upcoming long-term vision for rural areas. It is designed to help rural Europe deal with issues such as depopulation, connectivity, economic development, and limited access to services. The vision will be concrete, operational, and will unlock the potential of rural areas. We must address their specific needs from demographic challenges to digital connectivity and climate change. While making rural areas attractive, we must ensure that they remain rural and maintain their unique character. 
the public consultation on the vision closed on 30th November last year, and we received a high number of responses, 2,326 uh, responses uh, uh, were received. We press on by organizing several events, including a stakeholder conference, because we want those most closely involved with these issues to play a part in how they are addressed. We plan to adopt the long-term vision in the coming months, I think end of June. It will present a clear view on what kind of rural areas we want to have in 2040. Rural areas must remain attractive, especially to young people and families. This will contribute to stopping or even reversing population decline and brain drain. Many people in rural areas feel left behind, and this is not acceptable in a democratic Europe that must respond to the needs of all people. Knowing the aspirations and concerns of citizens, communities, and stakeholders is key to a successful and shared long vision for rural areas, which leads me to say a few words on the work we are doing on democracy and notably on the conference on the future of Europe. From day one, as you know, I have invested all my energy in citizens' engagement and empowerment in our democracy. Everyone can engage, including our children and young people. However, our politics has changed. Our work in demography, in demography tells us that our societies are changing all the time, so we must adapt we cannot address new problems with old ways of looking at the world. We need a democracy that is fit for the future. We understand the citizens' trust in democracy cannot and should not be taken for granted. Indeed, recent events in Washington have shown that we should not take our democracy for granted. One of the tools we are using to make our democracy more responsive, more resilient, is the Conference on the Future of Europe. It is an exercise in deliberative democracy where we engage with people of all ages, backgrounds and locations across the European Union. It complements representative democracy and can increase trust in our democratic institutions. We can only be successful if we all take ownership of the Conference on the Future of Europe. It belongs to all of us, including, of course, families. The process must be guided by the principles of inclusiveness and openness. It is of fundamental importance that all citizens are included. We will not leave anyone behind. I want to engage with those who do not usually engage with us, which means also people who are Eurosceptics. Using, I want to see what is the problem. What are their ideas? What are their concerns? Using a mixture of physical, online, and hybrid events, everyone will have the possibility to participate in an interactive way, including via a multilingual digital platform designed to be a one-stop shop for all information relating to the conference. The platform will provide some guidance to structure the debate to allow citizens to discuss and give a feedback, but we will certainly not want to predetermine the outcome because that would cause more damage to democracy than if we did nothing at all. Any issue that is of concern to our citizens is worthy of discussion. This is why the European Parliament Council and European Commission must lay the ground for the conference jointly and as equal partners. We are discussing next steps to launch the conference as soon as possible. This takes the form of a joint declaration stating the scope and main principles of the conference and establishing principles for those wanting to become our partners in this uh, very important exercise. I hope you will be one of them and give families a voice in the constructive and respectful deliberations. To conclude, the image of the U United States first family holding hands as they walk down the mall to the White House was a powerful one that, <laughs> that signifies the importance of family itself, of unity, of intergenerational solidarity. We must remember that people's lives are at the heart of our policy making. This includes our families. We do this for them, and I look forward to continued collaboration on our policies with your organization to ensure we give families the support they require. 
Thank you. This is for me for the beginning. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President, for these thoughts. We will now take a few minutes to answer some important questions before concluding this discussion. We know uh, that you must leave in about 15 minutes, so we will uh, just answer uh, as many questions as we can, and then we will make sure that your, the, the questions from the public uh, are all handed over uh, to your team. Uh, so the first question goes to President Bassi, who uh, had one question about the, the Green Paper on Aging. So uh, I have to be sincere. After your, uh, your discussion, <laughs> you respond 80% of, uh, of, of my question. But anyway, uh, please, uh, uh, I want to benefit for your uh, from your participation, so I want also to uh, to, to to reason with you um, about uh, the follow up, because as you know, we participated to the reduction of a reflection paper with Comesse, speaking about uh, uh, elderly, uh, the elder and the future of Europe. And uh, um, if I look at your portfolio, I can say that you can give us the, the real uh, signification, the real meaning of the European Union, because without democracy and without demography, the European Union does not uh, have any, any sense. So I think that your engagement is, in my, uh, as to me, in my point of view, is crucial. So how can, uh, uh, to our uh, countries. Uh, I mean, uh, do you think that uh, um, we have to follow just uh, a cultural level? Or, uh, or, for example, we can implement uh, your principles and your ideas and your projects, because we are not only speaking about principles and projects, you are also speaking about uh, uh, project a concrete life. Can you, for example, uh, uh, give you proposals I think that uh, your principle can be implemented, for example, with a new conception of uh, housing, uh, because uh, uh, the, 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 po the real problem, the concrete problem of the families, uh, if we have to keep on, uh, take on our responsibility in the intergenerational fairness, uh, of course, uh, we have to take care of children and our uh, and our uh, uh, parents, but uh, in order to achieve this result, we need also a new, a new, a new housing. Now, do you think that uh, we can consider all this expenditure as investment? Because this is uh, maybe now a theoretical issue, but do you think in the future, can we strong say that demographic policies can be regarded as uh, as an investment. I, I, I don't want that you, I know that it's difficult, uh, but uh, I want to be encouraged as well. Uh, thank you for this question. Of course, uh, this is too early to answer this question, but uh, uh, demographic policy is very important one, as I said, and this is first time that the commission, first time ever that commission uh, uh, established this portfolio on demography and democracy because the facts and the figures which we have from Eurostat show that uh, definitely we live longer, there are, uh, all, there are less and less uh, births, uh, which uh, leads us to, uh, if, we, if we live uh, 10 years more in the last 50 years, so now we live on European average 10 years more. And if you look at the figures, if nothing, uh, if nothing will be changed, then in uh, then in uh, 2070, Europe we will be Europe will be only four percent of world population. This is something which uh, we, which we have to anticipate, and this is the reason why we are launching this uh, uh, this uh, big debate. Uh, now with green paper later on with conference of the future of Europe. So uh, uh, we have to look into uh, all these uh, processes which are going on on the ground and try to uh, somehow incorporate uh, the ideas from the citizens 
into uh, concrete uh, policy and into concrete, concrete sectors in European policy. You mentioned housing, of course, housing is also important, but uh, at this moment, of course, uh, uh, I cannot uh, answer concretely, but definitely it is also part of the investment, as you said, because uh, uh, I want to highlight that the key role families play in this whole process. And uh, uh, the reflection we have just launched today concerns, as I said, as much child education, child care, labor market, or the provision of health and long-term care for all the persons. Housing is also there. So I will therefore be, uh, I think it will be crucial that you get involved in the debate now in response to the questions we have put forward. We put 17 questions in this green paper, and then it will help us to focus our reflection also on the expectations you have in relation to families. I cannot be more concrete than this today. Thank you very much indeed. And, uh, and uh, really, uh, I know that uh, I hope uh, to, to, to be useful, that my organization can be useful to achieve all the results uh, you have in your mind, because uh, I know that your uh, I want to support your uh, your wishes and uh, also your activities. So thank you, really, thank you very much for your, all your efforts. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I have another question myself. Uh, the pandemic has exacerbated uh, the weight of family care responsibilities, but these responsibilities are also a moment of real gratitude towards uh, the elderly, and it is also a priceless uh, joy for the parents. Recently published data in France uh, have, have shown that uh, the, the desired fertility rate for families is 2.39. Uh, why the real fertility rate has dropped down for the sixth consecutive year uh, this year, arriving at less than 1.87. Could you say just one word uh, on, about motherhood and also in terms of freedom for women uh, to become new mothers? Uh, the pandemic has been an incredible challenge and it still is for society as a whole, for our institutions, for the provision of services, but also for families. And you know it better than anybody else. And uh, in your question, you highlight the positive sides it, uh, of it for families. Uh, I can uh, very much agree with you. It has created, created a new sense of family togetherness, uh, but the pandemic has also had some catastrophic impacts on many families. It brought financial hardship to many. Children could not and still cannot attend school. Some are not able to follow distance learning as they do not have access to computer, to fast internet, and their parents cannot help with homeschooling. This is also the case. We have seen surges of domestic violence due to social isolation, and the feeling of isolation and loneliness has significantly affected the well being of many of our citizens. And now on parenthood, you asked. In my personal experience, motherhood is definitely one of the most beautiful journeys of all. But the question is how beautiful this journey can still be in the midst of pandemic with the fear of potentially deadly virus, the fear of not having the doctors available for regular checks up, checkups, the lack of uh, different outdoor activities, the perspective of no availability of baby care. This is why we need to step up the vaccination, go back to normality. This reassurance helps us in terms of making plans and thinking about a brighter future. That is also at the core of uh, so-called next generation EU or recovery and resilience fund. The massive recovery fund that is reinforcing 20 21-2027 um, uh, budget with additional 750 million euro to boost the recovery and support the sectors hit hardest, uh, hardest by the crisis. 
and families do have their do have their role to play in this recovery. They are actors of our society, actors of our common recovery, and therefore they are also instrumental in, ma in making this recovery a success. Thank you. One, one more question on the future of Europe. Um, so uh, we have a question here. So um, uh, is there already, um, could, could family associations be involved uh, on the future of, uh, uh, of Europe? Like a, a more general question to, to, to close our discussions. Conference of the Future of Europe is just about to start. We are, we are looking forward to Portuguese presidency to launch this conference. Uh, there are only some small issues to be solved. Uh, we are waiting for the joint declaration, which will be the basic document to start it. Uh, the, the declaration between uh, European Parliament, the European Commission, and uh, and uh, Council and European Council. Everybody is invited. Everybody is welcome. Family organizations are welcome all NGOs, different civil societies, the European Committee of the Regions, Economic and Social Committee, whoever is interested is welcome to come on board. So we think that, that there, is a, uh, there is a huge need at this moment within the pandemic to start this conference, to start our deliberations on our common future. And uh, 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 we will take every, every, everyone's ideas on board. As I said, even those who are anti-European. So everybody, everybody will be on board. And we designed here in Commission multilingual digital platform, which will uh, be the basis uh, uh, of this uh, of this conference so you will be able to submit your um, ideas there you will be also able to apply to organize different events you can organize event for example your association and then uh, about there is a small um, small difference from previous uh, debates and conferences once you finish your event you have to come uh, to this multilingual digital platform with conclusions because we need these conclusions in order to analyze your ideas and if we, we and later on in a year or two years time we will be able to uh, uh, maybe translate or transpose your ideas your uh, your proposals to uh, concrete policies and this is this this is the idea of the conference to show European citizens that they can influence European policies, that it's not Brussels bubble who uh, uh, organize everything, that uh, we have to come closer to all of you and to see uh, how can we improve our lives. And this is the idea of the conference. And uh, I can hardly wait to start it because uh, we lost a year, but it was pandemic, there were problems. And I hope now, regardless of uh, if we have uh, can have physical meetings, we can have online meetings. Now we are experts in online meetings. So I'm looking forward to launching it. And I'm looking forward to have your, uh, your families and uh, your organizations on board. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Vice President, for your complete and clear answers. We are, we are receiving many, many questions, many very interesting questions for you. Uh, but we are nearing the end of this webinar, webinar, so you have to go. But there seems to be a lot more to be discussed and debated. And I'm convinced that uh, the coming months will provide plenty of opportunities for that. So again, for those who couldn't have their questions answered, we will make sure that your questions are all handed over to the Vice President's office. I will give the final word to uh, Mr. Bassi, and I thank you all again for your participation in this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, um, I, when I, I knew that you were appointed uh, as uh, Vice President with Portfolio Demography and Democracy, I have to be sincere. I was really emotionated because it was the first time for me that uh, we could speak about demography in an institutional way. And uh, I think that uh, your job uh, is one of the toughest in, uh, in Europe. And um, I, we will uh, really support you because uh, uh, demo we, we are sure that we 
we cannot, uh, we can, uh, uh, um, the democracy is uh, strictly linked to, to the families and uh, uh, to the demography. Because in, in the family, you can learn values and these values are definitely compatible with the, the democracy. On the other hand, we need the, the families because without families, we don't have any future. So um, I will pray for you and I'm sure that uh, you will succeed. And for anything, uh, uh, we are uh, at your side. Uh, trying just to give you ideas because everything you do is the, you are the first one eh? and it is uh, easier on one side but also very tough on the other side thank you mr bassi thank you for praying for me we will be in touch and uh, i hope during this conference uh, on the future of europe you will be able to come uh, on and to ask all your questions and put your proposals and commission will listen as i said this time we are listening to citizens. We are coming closer, and we want to uh, we want to uh, uh, to uh, understand what are the problems and what are uh, uh, what are uh, the the hopes and what are the the fears, if I may say so. So we can solve this together, but we have to stay together. So all the best to you, to your association, to your families, and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.